Welcome to VC of Automation 9 video series. My name is Mahar Al Asfar, and I am a product marketing engineer within the VMware Cloud Foundation division at Broadcom. This is part one, VC of Automation 9 provider overview of this video series. We will start first with an overview of VCF Automation 9 as the consumption solution in VMware Cloud Foundation 9. We'll also discuss the VCF 9 infrastructure that we will be working with for the duration of the series and also explain the organization and tenant design plan we have in mind. We'll demo how to access the provider portal for the first time and explain how a provider administrator can get started and move on to explore the VCF Automation 9 provider portal and touch on things like general settings, connections, supervisors, identity providers, access control, feature flags, and branding. Let's now get started and dive right in. VCF Automation 9 makes it easier for IT teams, provider of IT services to jumpstart, scale, and manage a multi-tenant private cloud with new cloud services available out of the box. This is in addition to a curated self-service catalog for infrastructure services, all to help bring applications to market faster while maintaining control with governance and policies. Additionally, it helps traditional virtual infrastructure admins evolve into cloud admins that can offer self-service consumption of infrastructure resources as a service to application teams such as developers, DevOps engineer, data scientists, and many more with a more and fully automated self-service environment. With VCF Automation, IT admins can support and provide a modern cloud interface with cloud services, infrastructure as code, private AI automation, workload lifecycle management, orchestration and extensibility, governance and policies, tenant management, and finally, content management. With these capabilities, the solution enables application teams to obtain the necessary infrastructure when needed and make the necessary changes when required. Application teams are no longer required to worry about the intricacies of the underlying hardware and infrastructure, allowing them to focus primarily on application development. Now let's discuss and talk about the VCF9 demo environment or lab per se that we will be using during the video series. So we have a new VCF9 environment or instance. This instance contains a one management workload domain and one virtual infrastructure workload domain. Both domain have dedicated vCenters and NSX managers. The edge clusters are deployed and configured with border gateway protocol PGP enabling dynamic routing in both domains. And we also have a supervisor deployed in both domains where the supervisor are configured with VCF networking with VPCs. The supervisors also have been configured with dedicated external IP blocks. These external IP blocks must not overlap. Across the two workload domain, we have VCFA configured with two regions. So we're gonna have a region called US West, which will contain the supervisor in the management domain. And then we have a region called US East, which will contain the supervisor in the VI workload domain. Within VCFA, we'll have an organization called ACME. The ACME organization is going to be configured with two region coda, one from each region. So one region coda coming from US West and one region coda in US East. Within the ACME organization also, we will have a project called Core Stack. The Core Stack project will be configured with two vSphere namespaces. The ACME-dev namespace will be created in the US West. Therefore, it's going to be created on the supervisor in the management domain. And the ACME production namespace will be created in US East region. Therefore, it's going to be created on the supervisor in the VI workload domain. So this is basically our blueprint in terms of what we're trying to accomplish in this video series as we go and configure our organizations.
To access the VCF Automation UI, we start by opening the browser and navigating to the fully qualified domain name of our VCF Automation instance. The first prompt asks for the organization name and the built-in organization name for the provider management portal is called System. Once you access the provider management and you set the organization name, uh, you're presented with the authentication method. This is, depends on how, if VCFA Unified SSO has been configured and pushed down to VCF Automation. Otherwise, in a green field, you will only be prompted to use the local account, and that is admin. And with the password that you've set up when you deployed VCF Automation using the VCF installer or using uh, VCF operation. Provider admins can get started using the Welcome to VCF Automation page. This is where they can uh, use the Quick Start or the manual setup. The Quick Start will create a fully functional tenant organization along with the required resources. We recommend using this option if you're just setting up a single tenant experience or you're just testing or exploring VCF Automation capabilities. For production setup and for more control over parameters used to create the tenant organization, we recommend using the manual setup, which if you click into getting started, will take you to the infrastructure overview page where you see step one through step five, these steps that you will have to go through to set up the region, the organization, the IP spaces, the provider gateway, and the regional network settings that you're going to allocate to the organization. On the infrastructure overview page, we'll also see an overview of how many organizations we're currently managing, how many regions we have created and configured, how many supervisors we've discovered, and how many kind of libraries we've created. On the right-hand side, we can see product documentation and links to community. On the left-hand side, we have the infrastructure with organization, networking, region, supervisor, and content library, where we're going to use those uh, component when we're configuring things. Uh, we we'll also see under administration things like general settings. These general settings uh, allows you to configure things like activity logs, timeouts, organization limits, and operation limits. For example, if you want to set the lifetime of the API token, this is where you can come in and extend that from 90 minutes to 180 minutes, for example. Next, if we click on connections, we can see our discovered vCenter and NSX manager connection endpoints. These endpoints are discovered automatically uh, from VCF operations. Once the VCF 9 is deployed and configured and automation is configured and deployed from VCF installer or VCF operations, we should see the connection automatically uh, listed here. Just like we explained in the uh, design plan, uh, you can see that uh, we have a vCenter for the management domain. We have the workload vCenter, and they're both enabled, connected, and licensed. And if we click on NSX Manager, we see the same thing. We see the NSX Manager for the management domain and the NSX Manager for the workload domain, and they both have a normal status. You want to make sure that the status or the state of these connection endpoint is enabled and healthy. Identity provider is uh, another important uh, menu item in the provider portal. This is where you can come in and make sure that the identity providers are configured. By default, VCF SSO will not be configured. This is only here uh, and we see it configured because the enterprise IT team have pushed the unified VCF single sign-on to be used by VCF automation. Therefore, this is of OIDC provider type. Uh, we still can configure LDAP if we need to or SAML 2.0 as our identity providers. Once identity providers are configured, such in our case VCF SSO, then we can go to access control to import our users. You can see the built-in admin account that we use to log in into the provider management portal and it has the system administrator role of local provider type. And then we have two uh, accounts that have been imported from the VCF SSO, and this is of the Open ID Connect uh, provider type. 
If we click on groups, we can also see the imported groups from the domain. Uh, VCF SSO in this case is configured to point an Active Directory where we can sync these users in groups and import them into the provider portal and grant them specific roles. Certificate management, another important menu item within the provider portal. This is where we can manage the certificates of servers that VCF Automation already trusted communicating with. So you can see certificates for the two vCenters. You can see a certificate for the ops management. You can see also certificates for the two supervisors that we've discovered. The certificate library, on the other hand, is the other way around. This is where we manage certificates that VCF Automation provides to other if needed. Uh, so they can be used here when creating services that must be secured. Branding is a very easy one. You can use the base theme or you can create or import pre-existing theme. And once these theme for branding are configured, uh, you can assign them to specific tenants. Feature flag is a menu item that we have where we can activate or deactivate certain uh, features. We will uh, see in future videos how we're going to activate the provider consumption org and activate uh, the ability to create VM apps org, which we will talk in detail about in the next videos. Finally, events and tasks. This is where all the events can be listed, also uh, examined. So if you have a task that failed, for, for example, like this one here, we can click on it and see details of the error message and also be able to copy the debug information uh, to hand that over to, for example, global support team. The same recent task can be also seen at the bottom of the page. You can expand that or collapse it. And in terms of events, this is the list of events uh, that we uh, also capture. So for example, if somebody comes in and creates a token, uh, that event will be recorded here again with a status with, and the ability to click on the events to get further details in terms of uh, the event that have been captured. This concludes part one of the VCF Automation 9 video series. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.